dear students in this video of the cardiovascular system we are discussing the third video which is about the properties of the cardiac muscle so in the previous video we studied about the conduction system of the heart and in that i have asked a question suppose what is the conduction abnormality that can happen suppose whenever there is an abnormal connection between the atria and ventricle generally whichever impulses come from atria they have to come from SA node, then the AV node, then they will go through the mandula phase, then the Purkinje fibers. But if there are some abnormal connections, I asked what is the name of this bundle. These bundles are called as bundle of Kent. So the answer for that is bundle of Kent. And this bundle of Kent will lead on to a syndrome called as Wolf Parkinson White syndrome. So these were the two questions which I asked previously, Wolf Parkinson white syndrome so this wolf parkinson white syndrome has specific ecg findings which we will be discussing in our abnormal ecg so let's get on to the topic of today that is the properties of cardiac muscle so there are several properties of cardiac muscles which already we have discussed in the first two chapters like in the anatomy and the conduction system but here we are going to put them together and list them under various subheadings so when this question is asked especially in, in mbps exams you have to go through it through a specific types of headings. So I will, I will be discussing them today. And there are two important give reason questions. That is why the cardiac muscle cannot be tetanized and why digitalis is used in cardiac failure. So there is a proper mechanism by which the digitalis acts. So coming to the properties, generally whenever this question is asked, I would suggest you to write them under these following headings. That is the morphological properties, the mechanical properties, then we have the metabolic properties and the electrical properties. Electrical properties, even the action potential can be written under this, this heading. So I will try to discuss the action potential in the next coming video. So the electrical properties is very important among all this. So coming to the few morphological properties. The morphological properties, many of it which already we know it, the cardiac muscle is an involuntary muscle. It is not going to be under control of the voluntary system. It is an involuntary muscle. And it is striated. Why is the striation happening? The cardiac muscle also has the actin myosin components. And because of that, it looks striated. Then it has something called as the intercalated disc with gap junction. This already we saw in the previous videos. There is a gap junction which is connecting the cytoplasm of the two cells. And that is responsible for one property of the heart. If you remember, that will be the syncytial property. Syncytium. So the heart is able to function together. The all of atria can contract together and all the ventricle can contract together. And that is possible with the help of this gap junction. That is a morphological property. That is the functional syncytium. And it has highly good vascularity. This vascularity helps it to survive and give maximum oxygen possible. And there is plenty of mitochondria also. And it has gotten a well-developed sarcotubular system. And all of us know that sarcotubular system is the one which is going to provide the storehouse for calcium. So that is important. So these are the few morphological properties. Now coming to the mechanical properties. Like what are the mechanical functions that the heart is performing and what are its properties. All of us know it has contractility. That is it can contract during a systole. And distensibility. Distensibility means it is a relaxation property. Relaxation during a diastole happens. That is a relaxation property. And it also obeys the all or none law. This all or none law, even the muscle fibers you must have studied, the all or none law properties obeyed there also. And it has some effect called as trepe effect. This trepe effect, whenever we are studying the animal experiments or the amphibian experiments, there is a slight trepe effect can be seen. I will tell you what is that. And it has gotten a huge refractory period. That is whenever a second stimulus is given, it is not going to respond for it. So coming to the a little more details about the mechanical properties, we have to remember one law that is the Frank Starling law. It tells about the contractility of the heart and it is also called as length tension relationship. So what does this law state? This law states that the force of contraction, that is how much amount of generation of force is there, the force of contraction is directly proportional to the initial length of the muscle fiber. 
so we can write it down that is the force of contraction is directly proportional to the initial length of muscle fiber this already we would have seen it in the skeletal system but here the cardiac muscle also follows this law but there is a catch here whenever you are telling this law please make sure that that you should tell one more thing that is within physiological limits within physiological limits why is it so is this is very similar to the elastic nature of any uh, substance suppose you are stretching it a little bit what will happen when you uh, leave the elastic thing it will come back and recoil if you stretch it further obviously when you leave it the force coming back will be little more in the same way but if i stretch it still more it will give away so that is the nature of the cardiac muscle also that there is a limit beyond which this law is not going to be functional that limit is a physiological limit and especially in the cardiovascular system this initial length of the muscle fiber that is the ventricular muscle the initial length is dependent on one factor that is the venous return so if the venous return is more that is the more blood is coming to the heart then obviously the heart will stretch more so this initial length is determined by the venous return so it is pretty simple like whenever the venous return is more the force of contraction is going to more suppose you are exercising so what will happen the circulation becomes faster and more and more venous return is going to come towards the heart side and it is going to stretch which in turn will help for the increased in force of contraction this venous return will give us one factor that is called as end diastolic volume end diastolic volume so we can indirectly state that the end diastolic volume will, is directly proportional to the force of contraction so this end diastolic volume we will again discuss in the cardiac cycle chapter also and it obeys all or none law like the skeletal muscle the cardiac muscle also obeys all or none law suppose whenever a threshold stimulus is given whenever the threshold stimulus is given then it will oh, it will react or generate an action potential completely action potential completely below that below threshold it is not going to generate any action potential at all it is not going to respond at all so that is the all or none law even the entire cardiac muscle obeys the sensitivity and they also obey all or none law suppose a stimulus is given all of them will contract together that is the all and a stimulus is given and if it is not adequate then none of them are going to contract so this all or none law is also obeyed by the cardiac muscle then coming to the trepe effect or staircase effect it has gotten one more name which is called as the bowed which effect bowed which effect what is this effect do us especially these effects are seen in amphibian experiments this amphibian graphs also i will discuss in a separate chapter amphibian experiments what do they do is whenever a repeated stimulus is given there is a slight increase in the height of contraction up to a certain limit beyond which the height is not going to increase this smaller effect is called as trepe effect for initial few contractions the force of contraction is going to increase and this effect is called as the trepe effect or staircase effect just like a staircase it is going to increase why is it happening so there is some advantage or calcium availability is increased for the next contraction for the next contraction and this sometimes is also called as the beneficial effect the previous contraction is being giving a benefit to the second contraction this is also called as beneficial effect generally we see it in the amphibian experiments and amphibian graphs and charts also so we can discuss further about this particular effect there then the refractory period what is refractory period is the cardiac action potential has gotten in a huge refractory period refractory period means whenever a second stimuli is given whenever a second stimuli is given to a tissue the it does not respond at all it does not respond at all why is it so i will detailly explain it whenever we are trying to understand why the cardiac muscle is not tetanized just remember that it has gotten in a longer refractory period the refractory period in a cardiac muscle is long that is whenever a second stimuli is being given most of the time the heart action potential is in a refractory period and that is why the second stimuli is not going to change anything much in the 
frequency of the action potential that is being generated. So this refractory period is longer in case of cardiac muscle in comparison to a nerve muscle. So that is the reason, that is one of the reason why the cardiac muscle is not getting tetanized. Tetanization means it is a state of complete contraction. If the cardiac muscle stays in a state of complete contraction because of repeated stipuli, what will happen? Most of us will end up having a cardiac arrest. So it should not have a, it should not have a tetanizing property. And this long refractory period ensures that the cardiac muscle is not being tetanized. And coming to the metabolic property, what are the few metabolic important properties? It has got an abundant blood supply. The cardiac system is one a beautiful system. First, whenever it is giving supply, the coronary circulation is coming from itself. The aorta gives a branch that is a coronary artery and supplies its own self first. And it has got an abundant blood supply because the working capacity or the heart has to pump harder against and work continuously. It does not take rest at all. So it has to work continuously. So it has to have a good abundant blood supply and it has to have a good mitochondria and it has got a particular protein called as myoglobin. High content of myoglobin is present. What is the advantage of this myoglobin? This myoglobin also stores oxygen. Just like a hemoglobin, which binds to oxygen, hemoglobin binds to how many molecules of oxygen? We know that it binds to four molecules of oxygen. Whereas myoglobin binds to one molecule of oxygen. It might seem less, but in case of deficiency of oxygen, the cardiac tissue can extract the oxygen from this myoglobin stored oxygen also. So that is one beautiful property. And it works on complete aerobic metabolism. That is, it works only with the supply of oxygen. Continuous supply of oxygen should be there. And whenever the supply is cut off, then we land up in a disease called the myocardial infarction or the heart attack or MA. So this aerobic metabolism is constantly there. Then coming to the electrical properties. It has few electrical properties. That is the automaticity. It can generate its own rhythm, its own its own beat we can say automatically it can beat that is the property of SA node which is acting like a dominant pacemaker which we already saw then rhythmicity it tries to keep it at a proper rhythm there are slight changes between one beat to another but most of the times it tries to maintain the rhythmicity which we see it in the pulse also that is the it is regular in rhythm or irregular in rhythm most of the times the rhythmicity is also kept constant that is the time interval between the beats are also maintained by the electrical property. Then conductivity. This is the entire system we studied in the previous chapter from the SA node. It is being conducted to various different nodes and excitability. Excitability means it is the property to get excited from a stimuli. Most of the times it is, it is getting excited by the stimulus of SA node and at the same time if you give an external stimulus also will it get excited? Yes, obviously the answer is yes. That is why we are able to take help of the defibrillator and other machines which can excite the heart and regain the rhythm. That is the excitability property. So these are the electrical properties of the heart. So if a question is asked under the uh, different properties of the heart, these are the four subheadings you have to write under. That is the morphological property, mechanical property, then the electrical property as well as the metabolic properties. So these are the four different types you have to write. And further in detail about the electrical properties and then the action potential, we can discuss in the separate video in the next video. I hope it's clear. If you have any doubts with respect to this properties of art, you can drop it in the comment section. I'll be happy to answer your queries. Thank you so much for watching the video. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much.